about probability that you get life on the planet, ending up finally with a product of a bunch of numbers, it, which become increasingly tough to know. At the end is what's, how long the civilizations last. And ours has lasted a couple thousand years, so maybe that's the upper bound. But this is a crude way of trying to make an argument about looking at the whole galaxy, put all these numbers in, get the number of civilizations in the and, galaxy And there are a number out. of terms they had, six, seven terms, number of stars right. in the universe, number of probability of the planets around the right. star, number probability that something will yes. form on one of those planets. Now, one or two of those terms is where you attack. Yeah. You, you don't attack the first, the number of planets around the star. No, but no, you would attack which, which of those terms? Once you have life, and life I am willing to accept in many places in the universe. Okay, so you differentiate between intelligent, self-aware life right. and the existence of oh, life. life. Oh. The existence okay. of life I'm willing to, to accept. And, but the existence of intelligent life, the kind of intelligence with which we can communicate, is with, we can, I object to. And it is because it's so highly improbable. You know, Bruce was speaking of scientific miracles. I'm not talking about the miracles. We are not a miracle. We are just highly improbable. He always he was saying, therefore, I'm concluding that it is impossible. It is not impossible. It's so highly improbable that it is, the prob improbabilities are so high that no matter how many universes are there, Still won't have it. This is the guy I haven't zeroed in on in terms of whether you believe there's alien life. Everybody else has been <laughs> I thing. noticed that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, sure. Not I, I think there may be a very large number of intelligent This is not just to promote your aliens. fiction, right? Yeah, sure. That's that reason. Yeah, yeah, purely market driven. Uh, but seriously, you know, one of the numbers we forget about is that the Earth is, in fact, a young planet. Most of the stars in the galaxy form before ours. Planets around those stars have had more time to work on the evolution of higher intelligence than we have. If there's a certain down payment you have to make for intelligence, you have to develop a significant nervous system, then we didn't get into the game until roughly half a billion years ago. But the stars near the center of the galaxy got into this game five billion years okay. ago. Therefore? They've had a lot of time to work on this problem, and chance has had a, a much longer run there than it has here. I really find it, just on, on the basis of the numbers, doubtful. But let me point doubtful out... Doubtful that, that there aren't other... That there aren't right. Right. other... But we can use those very numbers to conclude the exact opposite. Because if they are mm. billions of years ahead of you, and what you say is mm. correct, most stars in this galaxy, mm. um, even stars like the Earth, are billions of years older than our planet, yes. then, because interstellar travel isn't that particularly difficult, long ago, these beings would have reached us. Okay, that's... Another argument that I'll take you on there. Yeah. Right. 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 So we've got right. two right. arguments, one entirely from science, one uh, from physics, I'm right. sorry, I have a slip of the tongue, and one from uh, biology. Your, your argument is yeah. very weak, because if we're talking about intelligence, they may decide they don't want to reach us. Right? Well, they don't have Especially a show. They see this show they, by remember, one of the crucial yeah, features, <laughs> though, of life itself, coming from its exponential growth, is the desire to expand. and. Uh, uh, creatures that do primitive, not expand. Primitive life might want to expand, but more sophisticated life might but not. But these life, in order to survive, they have no choice. For example, our sun is going to leave the main sequence in five billion years. That means it'll expand out and engulf the Earth. If these beings have not left the Earth, they're going to be destroyed. So one of the things life wants to do is to survive. That's the crucial um, behavioral characteristic of life, the desire to survive. Bruce, you were going to make a point. Yeah. I, yeah. I come at this from a different point of view, having been involved in deep space probes and things like that. I've asked myself, what are the limits? How far does this process go out? And it turns out, because we are so thinly populated with stars, that you have to travel at relativistic speeds. Easy. You have to, well, it's not so far easy. And you have to you deal with shield. In other words, it gets to be in a very complicated, energy-intensive thing. And where are you going to go? We just got through saying it's these billions of stars. You're just going to go like a TV movie and go to one to another? What you're no. saying is That's one you're speed. You're going to go, if you go at all, to a place you already know is inhabited or no. otherwise is valuable no, to you. No, you would use it to, uh, you would send a probe out, a robot probe, right. which would go to a nearby solar system to make copies of itself and then explore that solar right. system. These other copies would go out, which would go to other solar systems, which would then send out other copies yeah. to other solar systems. How do you know that systems. hasn't happened? 
They're not You have here. no way of knowing. Well, no, of course not. You have no way. Place. I don't think, you know, it's absolutely no way that process because would leave a record. Ultimately, it would. They would, they they would just like um, you can tell that this planet we're on is an inhabited planet from 100 light years away from the strong oxygen line. Life, when it moves out, starts to control the environment. But you just use a robot crops. These are made of silicon. No, or no, something no. Else. But see, they would they would affect the environment in a different way. Obviously, not creating oxygen, but they would start to remake the solar not system. Some people themselves. have said that. It, can you make the assumption that it, it would take a, an intelligent civilization a thousand years to travel one light year? D does that seem to make sense? A thousand years for every light year. Now, that, I think that actually that number may come from a different. Calculation. That's the idea that you have a species actually spreading and occupying new sites, right. not Which just is sending a probe. Typical okay, behavior okay. of life. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Right. Oh, yeah. so if, that's what you if mean. If that's right. true, then uh, across our current galaxy with a hundred billion stars is about a hundred thousand light years. So in a hundred million years, anybody in this galaxy, theoretically, or any civilization, could have come wherever yes. they they want. Now. That Even at long relativistic speeds, that's speeds comparable to that of light, uh, going at a slow speed, of, which we can do with current rocket technology, of a thousand years per light year, um, it would take, as you say, only about a hundred million years to cover Just the galaxy, galaxy, which is tiny compared to the, uh, time the, the, the billions of years right. that, of lead now, time. But that got. doesn't that doesn't prove the negative doesn't prove that they don't exist well, because, as Leon said, they may know how to come here, especially if they see the <laughs> show. Well, what you're <laughs> neglecting is the is the while you're extrapolating or this technology yeah. beyond anything we can now imagine outside it's standard of Star technology, Trek, and it's yeah. required it's not standard in, technology yeah. to go across uh, across uh, interstellar standard space. Physics is all required. Let Much me, easier to yeah. communicate okay. Not, than it is to travel. I, when you right. say there's nobody out there because they don't come across the universe the way we would do in our fantasy movies, it just says that we have a very limited view of the future because it's going to be much easier to use robotics and communications than it is to oh, actually right. go physically. So now you're, you're doing that, though. That you're, you are actually involved in listening. So tell us right. about SETI and how that works. Well, the, that's a good point. So the, the, the question, after we've debated this and you give your gut feeling and I give mine and Francisco gives his, is well, let's do the experiment. Yeah. The experiment and is to look for some experiments. Well, let's listen. Let's no, no, listen. no. The experiment is, is just beginning. Yeah. Because since things are very far apart, the only kind of signal we can receive is one intended to be sent, to received. It's a beacon. We're not going to get interstellar communication. We're not going to get the I Love Lucy version on Alpha Centauri, something like We're that. We're closer to truth version. The closer to truth. <laughs> None of that stuff. So then you have to have a, a civilization that wants to communicate with us, that's willing to spend lots of their money in building an omnidirectional beacon, for example. That's what people are looking for now with the microwave, mm -hmm. is an omnidirectional beacon. Think about it. Yeah, it's a How, focused energy. energy. No, no, oh, going I mean, in all directions. Oh, it's a very inefficient oh, way to go. Terrible. Yeah. Right. So they could easily say, or well, let's wait 100 years. These people get smart. They've got receivers in space, and they know a lot more about communications. And then they'll find the signal that we want them to find, if we want them to find one at all. Is this a primer to enter the galactic community, something like that, if they want that to happen. Mm -hmm. So the absence that we haven't seen anything when there's so many possibilities means nothing. Frank, do any of these two questions, either of these two questions, uh, whether there's intelligent life elsewhere in the universe or whether the human beings will ultimately colonize the cosmos. Do these reflect back in any way on the anthropic principle? I think that um, what science will tell us is that um, Francisco has already given the biological answer, which I think is correct, that uh, we are alone in the cosmos. But I think that um, life will actually expand out from this planet um, because all life uh, and robots are a form of life. They're very primitive now, but ultimately they will be the form of life that will they spread out uh, into the cosmos. Bruce has already described uh, what will, will happen. And um, ultimately, these forms of life uh, will just uh, take over the universe. Leon, can there be non-carbon, non-biological intelligence? Uh, yes, there can. Well, it can be. Uh, I can't evaluate the probability, but there are, uh, there are nuclear forces and nuclei which are very dense. And there are neutron stars which have vast accumulations of very, very dense nuclear matter. Processes in these, in these neutron stars take place a million times faster or more than processes mm -hmm. in our chemical uh, mm -hmm. uh, civilization or chemical experience. 
And so these uh, enormously fast uh, reactions could possibly generate enough complexity to begin the evolution of intelligent life, perhaps. And uh, it would be very interesting. It would be hard to 